Hello, everyone. My name is Chapna Watson. I'm a Microsoft Data Platform MVP, and I'm getting ready to take the DP600 exam and hopefully pass it. I'm going to take the exam tomorrow, and I'm going to use this time to study a little bit and document my journey along the way so that hopefully some of you who are in the same situation can benefit from what I document about my experience. The first place I'm going to check is the exam's official page itself to look and see what's included in the exam. You see that the passing is story 700. This is the beta exam and they will not be scored immediately. The results will come out about 10 days after the exam goes a GA. Here further down, there's a study guide. So this is going to be important. And then also there's a exam sandbox here that's super important to go through. If you are like me, you've never taken any of these exams before. This just takes you to a simulation of what the exam environment is going to be like. The next stop for me is going to be at the study guide because that's going to have more detailed information about what's listed on this screen. To just give you some background, I have been playing with Microsoft Fabric in preview for at least six months. I've been creating demos and presentations, but I want to make sure that I can fill in any gaps that are remaining. This is just general information going down. So skills measured. Again, this is exactly what was on the previous page. So not a whole lot here. It's, this section was at the bottom of the previous page as well. And now we're getting a breakdown. I'm going to go through this and decide which ones I need to study more. So last time I was looking at the custom Power BI report theme. I went and I looked that up. Also a little bit, I looked up about data gateway types and then I continued further. So I went down and I looked at the sensitivity labels. The rest of the items, I think I have a good grasp on. And then I just continued down that path. Down here for the lifecycle management, there was one that I didn't know from this section, the PBI DSs. Um, so that has been my strategy so far. And the way that I go about it is that I try to use Microsoft Learn first. What I do is that I go to Microsoft Learn and I will search it here. And depending on the article that comes up, if I don't get what I'm looking for, then I go look with a Google search or on YouTube to see if there's a quick video. While I was looking around on YouTube, I came across a very interesting video by Liberty Monson. This is really good for people who have never taken one of these exams before because she walks you through what an exam is like how the scoring is done, the kind of questions. And there's also a couple of screenshots of what examples look like. So I think this is a pretty good one to look at. This is where I was looking at data sources in Power BI Desktop for the PBIDS. So if I go and search here and just type PBIDS, you can see that it takes me to that article. I'm going to continue going down this list. I'm up to here. So I'm getting to a point where it's 40 to 45 percent. Looks like this is the heart of it, creating objects in the lake house and warehouse, copying data, transforming data, of course, and some performance tuning. So I'm going to spend some time going through these and just doing quick reviews for myself. And then I'll come back and report how it went. Since I had previously taken many of the learn modules in the introduction to a lake house, introduction to the warehouse, I think I am good for most of the topics that are listed here. I'll show you those learn modules in a few minutes. But what I did for this section was I went down to the transform data and for this section, implement bridge tables for a lake house or warehouse. I assumed that this was for many to many relationships. And for this one, I refer to this book, The Definitive Guide to DAX by Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari. And I went directly to the relationships section that talks about the many-to-many -many and the bridge tables. I think I'm pretty up-to-date on these transformations, hopefully, fingers crossed. 
And then this is when we're going to get into the core of the Power BI. So let me show you what you can do in Microsoft Learn to cover some of these areas. If you go to learn.microsoft.com, and you look at their learning path. In here, you can actually filter on Microsoft Fabric and that will bring up all of the modules that are related to Microsoft Fabric. Now, as you can see, I have finished most of these. Already, there are some that I haven't fully finished and this will tell me which ones those are. So if I have time, I can go back and try to finish them as well. Even before preparing for the exam, what I was doing was I was taking these cloud skill challenges whenever they became available. So if you search for Microsoft cloud skills challenges, there was a 30 days to learn it previously for Microsoft Fabric that it ended on December 29th, 2023. If you finish this challenge previously, then you would have received a 50% discount for the DP600 exam. And many more of these are going to come up. So keep an eye on the Microsoft Learn and the Community Hub for, for these challenges. So anyways, these challenges, the nice thing about them is that if you're new to the product and you just want to learn, this gives you a very guided path. So you won't get lost in the Microsoft Learn modules all by yourself or just looking up individual articles here and there. Instead, this is a very guided path that you can take and it saves it so that you can come back and pick up where you left. So you can see that I had already finished all of these modules to get ready for Microsoft Fabric. So these have hopefully tremendously help me prepare for the exam. So this has been my other source of practice. All right, so that's it. So with all of that said, it's almost end of the day for me. So I'm going to continue to study for maybe a little bit more. And then tomorrow morning, I'm taking a test early on in the morning. So wish me luck. I'll report back in the morning. It is the morning of the exam. I'm about 20 minutes from being able to check in. 30 minutes before the scheduled time of the exam, you can actually check in. So I've never done this, so I'm going to see what the process is like. But I've gone through the testing of the environment, and I've done that before. So this is the email that you get once you schedule your exam. And in this email, you have a section that says test your system. This will take you through a wizard where you can test your audio, your webcam. It checks to make sure there are no programs that aren't allowed to run. And then 30 minutes before the actual appointment, you can click on this to start the exam. So I'm done studying. There's nothing else I can learn at this point. So wish me luck. I'm going in. I took the exam and I don't know how I did. There were some questions that were easy for me. There were some questions that were hard. As far as content goes, I think everything that was in the questions fell into the categories listed. I didn't see anything that was outside of these categories. If you're following the study guide, everything was here. One of the nice things that I noticed was that when you're taking the exam, there's a button on the exam where you can open up Microsoft Learn and it opens up this exact page. You just need to know what to look for. So I would say if there are specific areas that you think you need help, make sure that you remember the link because you can open up new tabs in that interface and you can go to some of the documentation. So at least know how to navigate to those specific areas because when you land on Microsoft Learn and you type something, this is going to search all of Learn, not necessarily what's for Microsoft Fabric. The other interesting thing was that when I first joined, I joined 30 minutes before my check-in time. I actually tried to join 40 minutes before. They don't actually let you do that. They say you're not allowed. So 30, right at 30 minutes, I was able to get in, do the check-in. They ask you to take your cell phone and take pictures from different angles from your room. You take pictures of your photo ID and then you complete the check-in. At that point, you have to put your cell phone away. I don't also clean my room. So there was nothing in this room but myself, the laptop, a mouse, and of course, a desk. And then it said the test is going to start in a moment. So we went into a lobby at that point and it said you're waiting for a proctor. So at that point, you're seeing yourself on the camera. But then it said a proctor will be with you shortly and it shows you how many people are in front of you. So when I started 
this was Sunday morning around 9 a.m. There were about 110 people in front of me. And every 60 seconds, the counter updates. So I want to say my time was 9.15 a.m. I didn't get to start it till 9.45 a.m. So there was 45 minutes that I just sat there and had to look at myself. And that's it. And you're not allowed to leave the room at that point, I assume. So I didn't want to risk it. I just sat there, stared at myself did some meditation exercises to clear my mind, and then just played with the dust particles on the desk because there was nothing else to do. So I just sat there for a long time. After a while, it actually prompted and say, sorry, it's been taking such a long time. Do you want to reschedule? So that option came up. So in case you have to be somewhere, you don't have the time. Once it goes past your start time, it will let you reschedule. I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to go through this again. So anyways, once the test started, it was uh, fairly easy to go through the initial screens where they describe the rules and then you go through the questions. One thing to remember is that when you open up Microsoft Learn, it opens to the side and you can make it smaller or bigger. A couple of times when I was dragging the slider between the Microsoft Learn and the actual questions in the test. A couple of times it appeared that their system crashed. I don't know if crash is the right word, but basically it closed and that gave me a panic attack a couple of times, but it restarts. So it says reloading. So it reloads the environment and puts you back exactly where you were. So that was nice. And then once you finish the questions, then they give you an opportunity to go through and leave feedback for Microsoft. I made it to the end and at the very end, there was another stage where um, just a gray screen came up and I got stuck in that gray screen. And uh, the only options were to bring up a whiteboard or click on chat. And I did that. It took a while to get a proctor in chat and I explained the situation. There was no exit button. There was nothing. So I explained that to them and they said, well, just exit. The only way I could exit at that point was to reboot my computer, which I did. You cannot do alt escape. You cannot bring up task manager. I was stuck. So I ended up rebooting my computer. So long story short, I don't know if my exam was actually captured. I hope it was. So far, I haven't received an email and I really don't know what the process is. Overall, I am happy that I took the test because the couple of questions that I was struggling with, now I know exactly what are the areas that I need to work on. So those are the important things that for me to go and do a little bit more research on just in case I need to take the GA exam when it comes out again. Anyways, I hope this helped you and good luck with taking the exam yourself.